Today in Ham Radio Q&A, I take a look at the Redivis RT71. What are my thoughts on this uh, compact UHF DMR handheld? Well, you're just going to have to keep watching to find out. Hi, I'm Michael, KB9VBR, your host for Ham Radio Q&A. I'm on a mission to inspire and educate the amateur radio community, so if this is your first time watching, please consider hitting that subscribe button. Well, if I stated previously on this channel, I have a proclivity towards compact handheld radios. If the radio offers a high degree of utility, I'm more likely to grab the small handheld over a larger and heavier one. This is especially true when I'm using the radio with my DMR hotspot. Why do I want to trudge around the house with a heavy handheld uh, when something compact and low powered is really all I need? Well, uh, there's a few radios that meet that criteria, like um, Radio Oddities uh, GD73 and uh, the TID Radio DP580. Both of these units uh, we've looked at in previous videos. Uh, but today I'm going to take a look at a new handheld radio uh, by Redivis, the RT71. Uh, thank you, Redivis, for uh, providing an RT71 for review on this channel. So let's take a look at the specs of this radio. The Redivis RT71 features a wide range uh, UHF reception, analog and digital DMR tier one and tier two support, 1024 uh, channels, high sound quality with an AMBB, AMBE plus 2M vocoder, two power modes, uh, one in five watts uh, transmit power, and uh, it's got some customizable side buttons. Looking at the outside of the radio, the fit and finish is very good, uh, which is typical of the Redivis radios. The top of the radio has the antenna connection, uh, a combination power and volume knob, and a little LED flashlight. Uh, the volume knob is a good size, and um, it has a little guard along the edge to help prevent it from being inadvertently changed or adjusted. On the back of the radio is where the battery goes. Uh, this is battery release button on the bottom of the battery itself. There's a 1700 milliamp hour battery that they claim offers up to 14 hours of standby time. And this is also where the belt clip attaches on the back side of the radio. Unlike most other DMR radios that have a couple of little screws that hold the clip into place, this one snaps in with a little plastic latch. It seems secure, but I don't know what the long-term durability of this item will be. Hopefully, Redivis will offer a convenient replacement belt clips uh, in case it gets broken in the future. Turning the radio on its side, we find uh, the plastic cover protecting the two pin plug for the speaker mic and uh, programming cable. On the other side is the push to talk button highlighted in orange and two programmable buttons. Uh, the buttons have little rubber nubs on them to help uh, you feel the difference. The front of the, of the radio is, um, consists of a backlit uh, monochrome display and a large LED transmit and receive indicator that's located above the speaker and then six navigation buttons towards the bottom below the display for the menu system. The menu system is relatively easy to navigate. The uh, display only shows two lines of information, so the options scroll pretty quick as you push the buttons. One thing I like is that you can change the zone uh, from the main menu, uh, so that feature isn't buried deep down in the menu systems. Uh, you can also make adjustments to the channel settings. For example, you can change the power level, color code, or scan list for a particular channel, but you can't add channels from the front panel. Not that you'd really want to do that, uh, since that process could be quite frustrating uh, with, since this radio has no keypad. Programming the radio is similar to other DMR radios on the market. Uh, the software has the same procedures as any other ones that I've found. You know, first you set up your basic information, such as your DMR ID, and then uh, you can proceed uh, to add your contacts, your zones, and your channels. There's a few notable features on the software, though. You know, first uh, is uh, right there on the, on the main window, there's two big buttons with arrows on them to read from and to write to the radio. And the second is that on, on the menu bar, uh, there's a feature called tuning. Uh, this is where you can adjust the modulation, deviation, and gain of the radio. Unless you're familiar with these uh, operations, I recommend that you don't touch the settings. But I found that that level of control over the radio's inner functioning to really be quite interesting. The radio lacks a separate private call contact database, so it's difficult to maintain a list of private call contacts in the radio. Uh, you can certainly add your own favorite private calls into the contact list, uh, but there's no facility to manage those 
those calls. Uh, also, you know, like the TID DP580 that we reviewed, uh, you can export and import a list of contacts, but again, uh, the CSV style file is incompatible with any of the other radios that I've, I've worked with. So, you know, if you wanted to do an import and import cross radio, you're going to have to do a little bit of um, spreadsheet hacking to get those files to kind of match up between the two radios. Finally, over the air test. Audio quality is good and it sounds very similar to the other DMR handhelds that I've worked with. I received good signal reports with this handheld and according to um, my PiStar digital dashboard, the loss and the bit error rate or BER, you know, they're within acceptable levels. So what are the good and the bad about the Redivis RT71? Well, the good points that I like about it are its compact size and style are perfect for hotspot use. Uh, it's got a removable antenna, a dual drop-in charger so you can charge both the radio and a spare battery at the same time, standard two-pin programming cable, you know, a couple of DMR radios that I've, I've reviewed used a special two-pin cable that wasn't compatible with anything else, so it's nice to see that this radio comes with a standard cable uh, that you may already have um, lying around your, your, your inventory of radios. Which kind of brings us to the downsides of the Redivis RT71. And the first is that the programming cable is not included. Uh, the radio does use a standard two pin programming cable. So if you've got um, another Chinese handheld radio, an older analog radio or something like that with a two pin cable, uh, that cable you can use to program uh, the RT71. But I'm still gonna be upfront with the fact that uh, the cable's not included. So you'll need to either buy one or find a cable. A uh, no front panel keyboard, again, that's not a deal breaker with this radio. Uh, plastic clip to belt clip. You know, I'm gonna reserve uh, judgment on this until I'm satisfied with the long-term durability of the, um, of the belt clip. And uh, no mention or indication of the number of contacts this radio holds. You know, I couldn't find that list of, of the number of contacts in the specs at all. You know, but really, if I'm a betting person, I'd say there's probably gonna be about, this radio will hold probably 10,000 contacts. So who is this radio for? Well, as I stated previously, you know, compact UHF DMR handhelds are a great second radio or a hotspot specific radio. You know, if you're planning to jump into DMR, you know, I, I still recommend a dual band handheld as your first choice as it gives you VHF um, and uh, UHF support, both in analog and DMR. Uh, but the RT71 will work as a great um, hotspot radio, and since it does have 5 watts of transmit power and a little bit nicer than average antenna, uh, you can use it with local DMR repeaters too if you've got a DMR repeater in your area. Um, and I think that's one of the biggest advantages of the RT71 over uh, Radio Oddity's compact DMR offering. Also, the RT71 has a better menu system than uh, TID 580. It's easier to access the zones uh, with the Redivis than it was with the DP 580. These three radios are almost identical in size and price. Well, so well, which one of the three would I choose? I think the, the answer boils down to the feature set. Despite the limited front panel keypad, you know, I prefer the RT71 over the DP 580. Uh, the RT71 also has a better menu system and two programmable buttons on the side, while the DP580 only has one. If you were to compare this radio to the GD73, I think the RT71 wins out as it does have a detachable antenna. Although the GD73 can be charged with a micro USB connection, well, which is an accessory everybody has. And I also think the RT71 is a bit more ergonomic uh, than the GD73. I do like the compactness of the GD73, but with a longer term use, I found that it is easier to, e very easy to hit that push to talk button by mistake. And I think a metal belt clip, it's okay, but it's not the best that I've seen. So do you have any questions or comments about the Redivis RT71? I love to hear them. Please leave them in the comments below. And I'll follow up on the conversation and maybe pull out a few for my next uh, Your Questions Answered video. For more articles and information, be sure to check out my blog at www.jpol-antenna.com. Uh, your support of this channel drives the production of future videos. So there's a few things you can always do for me. Number one, if you like this video, give me that big thumbs up. It really helps a lot. Uh, check out some of the recommended videos alongside me, and don't forget to hit that subscribe button if you haven't already done so. Pressing subscribe and the bell notification will inform you when future videos are released. Well, that's it for this time. I'm Michael, KB9VBR. Have a great day, and 73.